Thank you. May I stand on this side of the yes. table, Your Honor? Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kerry O'Brien, along with Ms. Cottrell. We represent Erica Stefanko. The whole purpose of an opening statement is to give the jury a roadmap, a guide as to where this trial is going to go and what the evidence will show you. And at the end, you people will be given instructions from Judge Jones when you go into your jury room is to begin your deliberations. But what I'm going to ask you to do and what Judge Jones will tell you in her instructions is you should not discuss the evidence before you get to your jury room. And hand in glove with that, I'm asking you not to make any preconceived decisions. A fair trial is guaranteed by the Constitution of the United States. And part of that fair trial is that you wait to hear all the evidence. We talked to you during jury selection about the fact that the state may have more witnesses, they may have several, if not a lot, police officers, BCI people, law enforcement. And we asked you just because they are law enforcement, you know, they are to be believed by the same tests that you would believe anybody else. Wearing a badge, carrying a gun, having a degree from B, uh, BCI in chemistry or biology does not imbue these witnesses with some special status. Witnesses can be believed all of their testimony, part of their testimony, or none of their testimony. That's your decision. Now, this case has its genesis, its origin in a custody battle. Back in about two, the late 2000s, we have Chad Cobb. He's in a relationship with Ashley Biggs. Okay? They are. Who in 2012 is about seven years old. She is now 15 years old, and you will hear from her in the next day or two. She is, as I understand it, the only product of that union. After a point in time, Ashley Biggs leaves that family unit. So it's just he becomes uh, in a relationship with a Brittany Dunson. And it's my understanding you will hear from Brittany Dunson later on this afternoon. Chad And then about 2010, I'm trying to give you a, a timeline here, folks. And I'm also trying to give you a family tree at the same time. Along about 2010, Chad Cobb marries Erica Stefanko. And Erica has a child, an older child, who happens to be about then about seven years old also. So there's now a blended family, I think is the phrase. We have Chad. Erica, her maiden, her maiden name uh, at that point in time is Lyon, L-Y-O-N. So we have Erica Lyon and Alexander. And they get together. And they live out there on that Mount Eaton Road there. It's right outside of Doylestown, if you know that area. You go down New 21, you go up 585, and it's right in that area, on your way to Worcester, actually. So then about 2010, a little bit later, 
Ashley Biggs comes back into the picture. She wants visitation. And Chad doesn't want to give her visitation. It had been a very informal agreement, and now it gets into court. And it becomes a very bitterly contested situation between Chad Cobb and Ashley Biggs. Now we get to the summertime. It's 2012, a little over eight years ago. And the custody battle is not going well for Mr. Cobb. So Mr. Cobb develops in his own mind a plan. And that plan is, I know how I'm going to make sure I get eliminate the mother. At about 11.45 on June 21st, 2012, a female makes a phone call from a pizza shop and that pizza then is ordered to be delivered to 647 West Turkey Foot Road. It might be Turkey Foot Lake Road. It's down there in the Portage Lakes area. And you saw a, a front photo and then a rear. It's a single story frame building. And at approximately five minutes to 12, Ashley Biggs leaves that pizza shop. Her delivery distance is probably somewhere between uh, a mile and a half and two miles. She gets to that parking lot and there only Chad Cobb and Ashley Biggs know what happened. Chad Cobb uses a taser, he beats Ashley Biggs about the head. And you will hear from medical examiner Dr. Lisa Kohler about those injuries. They are numerous. But the doctor will also tell you that Ashley Biggs did not die from the beating because the ultimate cause of death is strangulation caused by some, in the medical field they call it a ligature, but think of it as a thin strap. And then you will hear from detectives from New Franklin or their service department that they see a little bit of blood on the ground when they come to investigate. Because they're on that scene pretty quick. Because the pizza shop people are saying, whatever happened to our driver? So the New Franklin people and or the Sheriff's Department are contacted. They start going over to 647, because that's where the pizza was to be delivered. A large one, I believe and they see a sign of a struggle and so now they're becoming a little more alarmed and they should be because Chad Cobb has taken the body of Ashley Biggs put it in her car and transported it to a cornfield in Doylestown it's outside of Doylestown Chad Cobb knows this cornfield well. His mother and father live a very short distance away. Chad Cobb then returns to the scene, but law enforcement is already there. And then Chad Cobb goes to another place nearby, about a mile away. Rex Lake Road, 
and why Rex Lake Road? That's where his grandparents live. And you saw part of the video that shows that. Ladies and gentlemen, he is then found hiding in the woods behind that barn. After six or seven months, possibly longer, and we get into early 2013, I believe it is, he then stands in front of a judge and admits that he beat and strangled and was guilty of aggravated murder of Ashley Biggs. His indictment has his name alone on that indictment. At his sentencing, he never mentions that he has a co-defendant or an accessory before the fact or after the fact. The judge asked him if he has anything to say. The fancy phrase for that is allocution. He never mentions Erica Stefanko's name. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a person who, after eight years now, and after never mentioning it before, until really about 2017, he's stewing in that prison. And now he's trying to get out from under full responsibility. Because he wants to drag somebody else down to his level. He wants to get out of prison early. He wants his sentence shortened. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the kind of person that you are going to try to evaluate. Someone that took the mother of his daughter, ambushed her, beat her, and strangled her. And you are going to determine how much truth is in his statement. Why would he do all this? Well, after he's been in prison for about a year or two, Erica, and he's in prison, by the way, the penalty is life in prison with no possibility of parole. Simply put, he must die in prison, whenever that is. So, he is desperate. His family is desperate to shorten his sentence, to get out early any way he can. You will see and hear from one or two family members, once again, you are free to believe all part or none of what they say. That's part of your job. He's been in prison, and now Erica, after a year or two, files for divorce. And then Erica remarries, and she remarries Chad Cobb's good friend, who also worked for him a person by the name of Christopher Michael Stefanko. They got married in about 2015. They have two children of their own. You will hear from Christopher Michael Stefanko when the defense has their turn. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm asking you to listen to both sides, the state and the defense. There will be a lot more witnesses for the state than there will be for the defense. One of those reasons, the state has the burden of proof. 
That's their job. Their burden of proof to try to prove each and every element beyond a reasonable doubt. Once again, we talked about the presumption of innocence. Erica Stefanko is still cloaked with that. And I'm asking you to listen to every side of the story. And at the end, ladies and gentlemen, I'm convinced you will find that Erica Stefanko is not guilty. Thank you. All right, thank you.